Bookie Pop. There's nothing else we started, right? Uh, new? No, the only other one we started the somewhat new was from last year. That was uh, yeah. Radiant. Yeah, well, we can maybe talk about that at some point, but not today. That's not an important thing. Hey, we're live. How's everybody doing? Episode 11 of the Getsuga Talk Show. Isn't it's me and Andrew. 12? I thought last week was 11. Was it le- oh, you're right. I'm sorry. See, <laughs> this is why there's two of us. There would be three, but our, uh, our other th- partner he, he's has... He's asleep right behind the desk right now. <laughs> sort of a... Uh... He passed the fuck out. We were watching some anime with him, and he just passed out. So we're not going to bother him. He's obviously tired, so... That being said, episode 12, uh, winter 2019 has officially started, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I haven't watched the bad stuff yet, <laughs> but definitely not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So we're going to kind of pump through some of the titles that we've watched the first episode, or three in your case, or two. You've only seen two yeah. or three. But we're going to talk about some of those. We're not going to talk about reoccurring shows, so shows that carried over from fall like uh, Slime, uh, SAO, Black Clover, and Radiant. We're not going to talk about those, but we're going to talk about the new shows that have started. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to talk about, so this one won't be too long because we do have D&D tonight, but we're going to hang out and chat for a little bit. Maybe he'll wake up at some point and come join us. We'll find out. Um, first one we're going to talk about, though, is Dororo. Um, this is actually a remake of a 2000 anime, which... Let's see how good the original did, actually. I'm curious. Couldn't tell oh, you. That's the manga. Uh, I'm curious. So the original anime only got a 7.23. They actually kept like very similar character art. Yeah. That's surprising. But uh, the original only got a 7.23, but the show, I think, is going to do a little bit better so far. It's got an 8.27, only one episode's out. Um, the basic concept, we talked about it last week, so if you guys listen in, we're just going to kind of recap. Um, long story short, uh, Samurai Lord wants to you know better his people, so he makes the deal with the devil, and his son, his first son is born. And he's stripped of pretty much everything, Arms, according to legs. the according to the synopsis that I remember reading. It's like twenty eight pieces. Oh, I'm sorry. He gave up forty eight parts of his son in order to gain the dominance for his city. Yeah. So his city's doing well, but his son is born without all these. He doesn't have eyes, skin, ears, fucking arms, toes, anything. Like he's tongue. I'd assume most internal organs are still yeah, missing. Pretty, yeah, all that's gone. He can't even talk. You know, yeah, he can't no. hear. He can't see. He can't do anything. Um, and then, like, the long story short, he gets pushed away by one of the midwives because she wants, he thinks, she thinks that he wants to live, so she pushes him down the river in a boat. She dies, whatever. And we see him kill one of the demons. He gets his skin back. Yeah. Or maybe just his face skin. We don't know if it's separate, you know. We yeah. just only see that he got his skin on his face back, which is wild. Um, the show looks pretty fucking cool, man. Like, it's interesting. The namesake of the show is actually the little thief boy that he runs into. Yeah. Which I don't know if you caught that part. Yeah, but yeah. I caught it. Which I also found strange that the show is named after the secondary character. Yeah, which I'm interested to learn about. Yeah. Um, but the show seems pretty cool. It's a really cool concept. The art's pretty nice. Um, the first fight scene was pretty sick. You oh know? my gosh. I was not expecting that. Yeah, he just rips off his arms and has blades underneath. And you're like, okay, <laughs> like here we go. Because essentially the main character is a mannequin at this point. Uh-huh. He gains his skin, and as far as we know, that's the only real part of his body that he has or yeah. gotten back, as far yeah. as we know. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we're going to learn, because at some point I'm sure he's going to be able to talk or something. Yeah. But I'm sure for now, like, he may have gotten, like, one or two smaller pieces back by now yeah. if he's been traveling, but it's pretty sick. It's really cool animation. The fight scene was really well choreographed. It's just a cool concept in general. I was super down with it. I was not expecting Garbage Monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What I've realized, not all of the shows are like this, but there's a lot of dark theme shows this season. Oh, yeah. Like, Boogie Pop Phantom seems a little dark. I haven't seen it yet, yeah. which we'll get to that, but, like, that seems a little dark. The uh, the Promised Neverland, super dark. Dark, you know? oh so my gosh. I'm actually happy. I like some dark style anime once in a while, and I think, like, I don't want to say, like, Goblin Slayer laid the path for that, but Goblin Slayer was, like, a big jump for a lot of people because they didn't realize that there was, like, dark, dark anime. anime out there. Yeah, they didn't realize that there was some dark stuff. Like, Berserk, of course, existed before that, you know? Like, Berserk. there was other shows. It's just, I think, in the recent years, you had things like Album Slayer, like, really kind of, like, people be like, oh... But another thing that changed between Berserk coming out initially and Goblin Slayer coming anime has become a lot more mainstream now a lot more people everywhere pretty much know what anime is and a lot more people will watch anime just off willy-nilly hey this was pretty good why don't you watch it yeah it's not the same as it was back then yeah dark anime stayed in its corner in the old days (laughs) yeah and there was definitely like a fan base for it It was almost like uh 
what do they call that? Um, uh, what is cult classic? There you go. Cult, oh, yeah. cult classic. It was very like a cult classic kind of thing. Yeah. Much like, um, you know, Quentin Tarantino movies were for the longest time, you know, oh, yeah. and now it's like, oh, everybody's on, on board. And I think that's kind of where we're heading with this style and direction of anime. I don't know. I'm, I'm super hyped for it. It's Well, the isekai pretty much reigned supreme for, for so of, long. And I'm, I'm finally glad that it's dying out 10, a little bit. 10, yeah. 15 years yeah. old. It's dying out, but we do have more isekais coming up. But yeah, it's, isekai has not died. It has but, become less... It's less saturated now. Yeah. Because for a while, it was like four or five every season, and you're just like, I don't care anymore. I'm done with it. And I'm happy because In we, we have... with my smartphone. Because we have one good isekai this season that I know of. Yeah. And I'm super hyped for it. I think it's probably one of the most hyped shows heading into the season for everybody, but whatever. Uh, you got anything more to say on Dororo? I think it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty dark. First episode. I'm definitely I... watching more. You oh, know? yeah. Watch or don't watch. I think that's our rating list right yeah. now. Watching. Watch or don't watch. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> watching this. I'll give it a couple more episodes. Um, I don't really have a thing for it just yet, but I'd yeah. say it's doing quite well for being, especially yeah. for being a remake. It, it's really hard usually... to rate something right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm curious if I do get into this and I enjoy it, I'll probably go back and watch the original just to see. Yeah. You know, just to like compare Make and contrast. Make a comparison between yeah, the old see and see how much they changed and adapted and all that. I think it'd be fun. Well, the original seems to be in black and white. That's what the art looked like, but we'll see. We yeah. can find out. Um... All right, you got anything more? You good? On Dororo? No, I'm right. good on Dororo. That being said, another remake. We got Boogie Pop Phantom 2019. Um, another couple of translations for it are Boogie Pop Never Laughs and Boogie Pop Doesn't Laugh. Um, I haven't watched any of this, but it was one of the ones that I talked about last week during like my, like, hmm, this sounds like it could be a fun show. Um, it is. Talk to us about general concept of it. General concept of it is, is that... Uh, let's see here. Main character has dual personalities. Okay. One is Shinigami, the other is an everyday high school girl. Okay. She, her job is literally to go around and take care of any supernatural entities that come into the world, as far as I can tell. Okay. And that's basically all episode one really covers. She shows up, tells a... I'm guessing just an everyday guy, which is supposed to represent us in the anime, people that have no idea what the fuck's going on. She explains what's going on to him. Did you say she had, like, a boyfriend? Is yeah. that a, this different guy? Yeah. Okay. Can't remember his name. He wasn't extremely... There's, there's a character list right here. He wasn't extremely <clears throat> memorable. Yeah. Our main girl is Toka. Okay. Let's one down. Yeah. And, uh... Boyfriend? Shit. There's Kazuko, Masami. Uh, those are the only listed ones right off the top. I can't remember his name, so... Do you remember what he looked like? Not terribly, no. It wasn't oh, long. that's a chick. Yeah. Definitely not him. <laughs> Here's his... This, whoever this guy is, Satomi Masami. Uh, with a subconscious suicidal desire to be killed by something stronger than him. He reacts with disappointment every time he narrowly avoids death. Okay. Yeah. So, he's... just a weird weird point to talk about real quick. This is made with 18 episodes. So I'm curious this is why that that's such a weird season length. That is not. I don't think I've ever seen an 18 episode season that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure I have, but it's not something that's popping out to me off the top of my head. No. But yeah, no. Uh and basically she the first episode is literally her explaining to the her boyfriend, I guess you could say, what is going on with her. Okay. And the fact that the Shinigami is fully aware of everything that's going on, but Toka herself is not. The second episode focuses from the thing that she's hunting's point of perspective, and the boy, the other boy that we just looked at's pro mental profile, basically. Yeah. The second episode focuses on them. So, the classifications for the short mystery, horror, and psychological, do you think it's so far filled that? They have a third episode out, we didn't get a chance to watch that, or you didn't. Yeah, no. But do you think it's filling that profile or portfolio pretty well, or do you think it's kind oh, of... Oh, yeah, no, you still don't really know what's going on. You just know that shit that shouldn't be able to be happening is happening. So, I'm going to ask that you watch this for a few more episodes and get, like, a general idea. Yeah, because the I mean? first two episodes, I couldn't really figure it out. And yeah. Most of the time, I spent scratching my head going... Yeah. What? It's really rare for me to drop an anime early, but if the show's not making any sense, you know what I mean? Like, another three episodes from now, it's just not worth it. Yeah, no. Unfortunately. It, it made enough sense to the fact that I have a general idea of what's going on, but 
other than that, that's about it. I got you. And according to the uh, the My Enemy List website, the original didn't score very well either, so it's unlikely that this will get a higher score. Right now it's not doing too well, I assume, because most people don't have any ideas of what the fuck is happening. Because from the way you described it to me, just off-stream and things like that, it's nothing makes sense to you. So Yeah. Oh, I remembered why I knew that we talked about slime was because we went out Tuesday night. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have nothing to say on this. I still want to give it a shot, but I'm going to let him get an idea of how good it is first before I dedicate myself. Because as we said, there's seven shows that between the two of us are watching right now that are new this season, not including slime, which we're already watching. Um, and then other shows that we've been watching on the side, like Radiant. Uh, we were watching Chica for a little while. We just recently dropped that, at least for a little while. It's just... It's maybe on hold. I don't know how I feel about it. It's it's a weird one. It's very bare bones, basic anime, and there's nothing like really that stands out so far. I thought it was a cool concept, but yeah. they haven't done any like expletives to where I understand anything that's going on. There's no information being fed to me, and I'm so lost. Um, all right, you got anything more to say about Boogie Pop? I know we're kind of I'm flying looking these, forward but... to what they're trying to do. Okay, because I have a feeling that it will open up and the story will get better. It's just right now they haven't quite done that yet. I gotcha. <clears throat> doo, 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 doo. Sorry, I forgot that I had the stream open, so I wanted to check the chat real fast. Let me get my phone up to you. All right, the next show we have on our list. You haven't touched this one. I don't know if there is an English translation. Let me see if I can like translate this real quick, because it doesn't even list one on my anime list, which is pretty rare. Um, Japanese to English translation. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. Just go away. I just don't need sound. Hold on. One second. Un momento, por favor. <laughs> All right. Uh, enter text. Nope. There's no... Okay. The rainbow has come true for me is apparently the loose translation according to uh, Google. But, so we know how bad that can be. Um so I dropped this. I'm not going to lie. I have no interest in watching this show. It is about as trash as I expected it to be. Um, the general concept that we read last week is this little girl brought home her school friend and her older sister, who's in college, fell in love with her, even though the little girls are in fucking fifth grade. So it's really awkward. I was like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Maybe it's a comedy or something. So I watched the first episode, and here's the concept. Older sister's a fucking shut-in. Doesn't leave the house. Yeah. Little sister's super friendly, outgoing, whatever. Brings home her friend. And the older sister's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, she's so cute. Why do I feel this tingling inside? Oh, no. And you're like, oh, boy, here we go. And to, like, quickly, for the sake of brevity, explain what happens in the next, like, two minutes is the older sister is super into cosplay and wants to dress up the little girls in cosplay. So the first episode is her, like, bribing them with sweets to change into cosplay outfits and act cute and shit. This sound like but the sex? older sister is super creepy about it. Why does this sound like a pedophile anime? It's pretty. It's pretty pe pedophilic. Pedophilic is that a word? Oh. Yuri pedophilic with lollies. It's just not. It's a little uncomfortable. And the mom comes home and gets super mad that the older sister was feeding them candy before bed. So that's pretty much the whole episode. And I, uh, I mean, just I yeah, wasn't into it. Not my style. Yeah. It might be for some of you guys out there, but it's definitely not my style of anime you know it's not something that i'm into there was a couple of funny moments don't get me wrong but it was just not anything near what i was looking for it was just uncomfortable and awkward if you're into lollies you know and yuri stuff this is all for you but if not you know hey just move on with your life don't waste your time i have nothing more to say on that all right so you didn't watch this one either but this is another one i started i'm watching all the trash for you don't worry okay <laughs> So I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining in the next few minutes. Um, this show is called Quintessential Quintuplets, or The Five Wedded Brides, you know, because for some reason there's nine different translations in Japanese. Um, the long story short, uh, nerd trying to save money, you find out very early that he's frugal. He orders, like, the cheapest thing on the menu every time, mm -hmm. and the cheapest thing on the menu isn't rice. He's like, oh, it's a the beef cutlet special, but without the beef. And it's like 100 yen cheaper than just rice or whatever. And then he gets miso soup too, so he's like super stoked about it. But anyway, uh, his family's in debt and he's poor, so he's trying to save money as much as possible. And he runs into this chick who's like, oh my god, you're so smart, even though you study like a fucking nerd, whatever. And then he like makes fun of her for eating too much and says she's going to get fat, so she's super offended, you know. Mm. And he finds out that he, his dad got him a job tutoring her and her four sisters, because they're all quintuplets. They all have unique personalities, whatever, and 
in the first episode, it's just like him trying to like get to know them and us learning about the five main girls. Um, I don't remember their names. I'll use this though. So they're all their last names are Nakan Nakano. Nakano? Nakano. 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 Uh, Itsuki is the main chick. This one right here, if you can see her on the stream, probably not. Um, she's the one that he calls fat who eats a lot. She is, like, the most studious of the group, but she also likes him the least because he said she was going to get fat, which you just never do to a woman. <laughs> friendly advice for you out there, you know, just don't mention it. It'll get you in trouble. Um, <laughs> These are the things you don't say to your wife. <laughs> the one after that is Ichika. She's, like... The oldest sister, I think. I think she's the oldest of them, even though they're all quintuplets. But she seems like the older sister of the group. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And she just sleeps. She's a narcoleptic, and she's a slob. He walks into her room to like try to wake her up to get her to come to the study lesson, and it's just fucking trash everywhere, dude. Damn. And then she makes fun of him because he's more focused on the trash and studying than the fact that she's laying in her bed with no clothes on. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta give that trash shit in there. Uh, who else do we have? We have Miku, which is the quiet one who wears headphones all the time. She's apparently supposed to be the most social, but she talks the least, so I don't know how that wasn't supposed to work out. Um, but whatever. She's... I don't know. They don't really tell us a whole lot about them. It's hard to, like, clump five characters, six characters' backstories into one episode, you know? Yeah. Uh, we have Nino, which is this one with the fucking things in her hair. I don't remember anything about her, except she was, like, the one ready to kick his ass because they thought... All the sisters thought that he was stalking the main girl because they didn't know that he was hired to be their tutor at first. And he was, like, trying to apologize because he found out that he was going to be their tutor. And he's like, oh, no, I can't, like, end with me telling her that she's going to get fat because this isn't going to go well. Because the job is going to help his family get out of debt. Like, yeah. they're rich. I don't know if I mentioned that. But, like, the sisters are all rich. Their parents are rich. And they came from a rich uh, private school. But their parents moved their schools because they're about to flunk out, which is why they need a tutor. Really loose backstory, whatever. Um, who else? There's one left, right? Yotsuba, which is like the youngest sister trope, right? She's like super energetic, super friendly, super happy all the time. And no. I don't know. It seems like a fun show. I enjoyed the first episode. It wasn't super trashy. It had like obvious trashy like comments and moments for a moment there. But like it was funny, you know. Um, I'll give it a shot. It's probably just going to be a trash harm because they're all going to be into him. That's how it's going to turn out, right? Probably. And then, oh, like the, the concept of the show is it's like a it's like a mystery, even though it's not really a mystery, I don't think. So the main character is, the whole show is a flashback, and he's standing there on his wedding day, and he keeps seeing his wife, and he's like, oh, I'm thinking back to the day I met all of you, and he's marrying one of them, and you're supposed to guess, like, which sister he ends up marrying, but they all have different colored hair, so I don't think it's that hard of a question, and there's, like, clearly, like, a main, goal, like, a main sister, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's pretty obvious who it's gonna be, but it, it's been fun, I've enjoyed it. I'll have you watch it at some point, because it's actually not bad. It's enjoyable. Yeah. We might drop it. It might be terrible, but it's a standard harm trope. Oh, is he waking up? Steering? Is he waking up? Mm-hmm. Is he alive? Is he are you going to come hang out with us? Give me like 20 minutes. 20 minutes? <laughs> 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we'll keep talking about stuff. You're going to run out of stuff to come join and talk with us about, so... Yeah. Uh, All right, well, I don't really have anything more to say on that. It's just your stereotypical harm. Harm Yeah. It is what it was. All right. It sounds like Love Hina. Man, is this like the third or fourth one I've done in a row now without you actually watching an episode yet? Only because, dude, I mean, I've had my fill of harem anime. I, have... I understand, but I was like, I gotta give everything a shot this season. You know, you gotta you gotta put out your... Dude, even, You gotta you, test the waters everywhere. You and me looked through this list, what, last week before the season really got going? Yeah, and I and watched like we, seven of them. And we looked at all of them and we're like, well, this is an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah. Data Live is going to be terrible. We know that. <laughs> uh, Mob Psycho is going to be good. And then, like, the rest of it is just like, hmm. Well, I wonder. So this is the one that I was joking around with probably the most last week. Uh, domestic Girlfriend. Dude sleeps with a chick because he's trying to get over the fact that he's in love with his teacher. Turns and out to be his teacher's little sister that is now... Their, their, their mom is getting married to his dad. And they end up moving in together, like, a week after he sleeps with her. And then it's just, like, this really awkward, like, life situation. And the older sister, as you watch the episode, she, like, is huge. Like, I wouldn't say an alcoholic, but she drinks. Like, she's always drinking beer and shit. And, like, at the very end of the first episode, she drank, like, 20 beers. And she's passed out on the couch, you know, in that, like, innocent moment. And he's like, well, I got to get past her because, you know, this is it's now or never. So he goes to kiss her while she's sleeping. Rape vibes, by the way. <laughs> and as he's, like, this close to her face... 
Sorry, I gotta make sure that's on camera. Like, this close to her face, the younger sister, like, opens the door and, like, looks at him, and then, like, her eyes are, like, you know how, like, the eyes move, like, she has some emotional reaction, but she has, like, a deadpan face, and then he's, like, uh, uh, like, he knows that he just got caught in the act, and it's just, like, well, what the fuck? So, after he slept with her, the, the younger sister, she's, like, pretend like this never happened, I'll never, like, next time we meet, it'll be strangers, and then they find out they're related, and she's, like, look, just get over it, it's in the past, okay? But I think, obviously, what's gonna happen is she's actually into him, and the older sister has a thing for him, and it's just... One of those things, I... One of those anime? Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. I enjoyed the first episode. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. <laughs> it's just gonna be, like... I'm just... So, the reason I think I'm, like, quote-unquote, like, into this is the fact, like, could you imagine this being your life? Could you imagine, like... You know what? I'm really into home, this. I'm really home. into this chick. But you know what? I gotta get past her because it's clearly never gonna happen. Yeah. And then you go out with some friends and you sleep with someone else... And then a week later, they're moving into your house and your siblings. And you're just like, fuck. <laughs> How do you not be awkward about that? How does this not turn into a giant clusterfuck? How does it not turn into a porno? This is the story of a porno, okay? <laughs> I guarantee you by, like, episode, like, three, they're both going to, like, very clearly be trying to get with him. And then he's going to be like, uh. And then it's just going to get awkward as fuck in that household. Oh, shit. There are 17 volumes, by the way. Wait, what? I think it's all manga, but I'm just... It's just one of those things. Oh, man. There is no way these are light novels. So they do end up dating. Okay, sorry. I just, like, super spoiled some stuff. I'm gonna not say anything about who he ends up dating, because most people couldn't read that on stream, and I'm fine with that. Interesting, interesting, interesting. <laughs> Uh, how does that work? Okay, so I'm not going to say which sister he dates, but how does that work? How do your parents be like, oh, yeah, that's fine? They're technically not related in the least. But, but the they're legally time, related, and it's just that awkward moment in your house. Like, that's got to be I weird. I can't imagine what that couch conversation with the family would be like. So, Dad, m uh, stepmom, uh, I want to ask your daughter to marry me. What? We're, what? <laughs> huh? We're, you're already legally... Did, what? <laughs> See, that's like a horrifying thought, right? Think about this. Like, down the road, 30 years from now, okay? You're married. You had kids. Life's good. You get divorced. You get remarried, but your new wife has kids the same age as yours. I'd be horrified that something like this is going to happen. Because while I understand, yes, they're the same age, yes, they're not legally related, it's still horribly awkward. Could you imagine the wedding? It'd just be a remake of the first wedding. <laughs> like, all the same families there. <coughs> oh. That's all I'm saying, man. That is going to be one fucked up family tree. Yeah. So the younger sister is like super deadpan and just wants to experience shit. The older sister is like the super friendly, chummy, like, haha, you know, she's the teacher that all the, yeah. the boys like. She's the um, teacher all the all the high school boys fantasize about. Pretty much. I think that's all I got to say. I'm going to, I'm waiting for you to watch this. Uh, we'll be watching, or at least I'll be watching next week's episode on Friday. These don't come out until Friday, so it'll be a little while before I get to watch them. Or, no, it came out today. I take that back. It comes out on Saturday. Why are the days so messed up this season? Have you thought I, about that? We got Monday. We got Monday, two. Wednesday. Is there Tuesday? It might be one on Tuesday, but I haven't watched it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Normally we get like Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Is when all the fall ones usually come out, right? Well, we had Wednesday for Bunny Girl Senpai. True, true, yeah. we did. But that was a welcome change of pace. Yeah. I still don't know how to get him. Or, like, he's interested in watching it. I just don't know how I'm going to, like, I don't know how to describe the show. <laughs> or if he's going to like it. All right, now on to two shows that we can actually both talk about. Are you ready? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Uh, the Promise Neverland. This was one of the ones I was super interested in last week as well. Um, the concept is there's a bunch of orphans, and they live happily, and they all get adopted by the age of 12. And they're just told not to go past the gates of the, the orphanage, and they'll be happy. But, uh, yeah, that's all we knew going in, and damn, the show went dark. 
I knew, okay, so, like, you can tell off the start something was going to happen. Well, no, duh. Like, but... it was just, like, super, like, hmm, this is a little too good. You know, it was, like, one of those moments. And, like, damn shit got bad, like, real quick. So, spoilers for episode one if you haven't watched it yet. This is actually rated pretty fucking high already, and I don't blame them. Yeah. So, spoilers for episode one of The Promised Neverland real quick. Uh, they're all a part of a human farm, and they're all being farmed to be eaten. We don't even know what the fuck they're being eaten by. Yeah, we don't know the names of the creatures. We don't know what they are, but they're fucking gnarly looking, that's for oh, sure. Oh, shit, yeah, no. And... Nothing I'd want to find in a dark alley. Yeah. I'm curious how it's going to work. Because I'm pretty sure, like I told you when we were talking about it earlier, that, like, all the little kids are going to die. Oh, all, fuck. Except, uh, like, except for the main three, you know what I mean? There's probably going to be a couple of close calls, but, like, all the side characters are going to die. Oh, yeah. And I think horrible, miserable, fucked up Oh, yeah, place. that's going to be horrible. Because I guarantee you, like, half of them are going to get cold on their way out. The only ones that we've actually, like, seen and interacted with are the ones that are going to get out, right? So you yeah. have the, um, I don't remember any of their ca- super the Super athletic chick. Super yeah, the, the three main characters, right? Yeah. There's the three main characters. There's the green-haired chick with the glasses. Yeah. Um, the little, I feel, I don't remember his name. Was it Rob? The kid who was helping out Connie at the start? Don. His name was Don. Yeah. Uh, Gilda is the chick with the green hair. Ray, Norman, and Emma are the main three. And then Phil's a little boy. I was going to say these were going to be the ones to get out. Nat is apparently the kid with the red hair with a horrible face. Maybe he'll get out, but the rest of them I don't see getting anywhere. Yeah, no, you know, they're all fucked. Because we don't know anything about them, so that means you're free bait to die. Um, and then Connie, well... She's dead. She's super So dead. you know how I knew Connie was going to die? Because they made her too cute. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. You know, they, like, overplayed how cute she was going to be and everything and how happy she was to go. He knew something was... Like, he knew she was... I knew she was going to die. I did not know how. I was not expecting that. Yeah, it was a little wild. <laughs> a little wild. Man, I'm excited for the show. I think this is, like, my most hyped show. I think the other one that we're going to talk about is pretty good. But this one, like, probably, like, the strongest first episode I think I've ever seen. Not ever, ever, but, like, easily top five. They it's gave, very rare to have a show get me, like, this hooked right away. They gave us a clue to what was going on, though, in the freaking storyboard art. Yeah. It's a freaking fork and dinner plate there, and they're standing I didn't even it. realize that. That's a good point. <laughs> That's smart. Look at that. Symbology and everything, my friend. Yeah. And a ticking clock. Is but, like, okay, plate. so my favorite show from last year, Bunny Girl Senpai, you know what I mean? The first episode didn't have me that hooked. I think it was, like, the first three that I watched together because I waited oh, a yeah. little bit. I watched the first three, and I was like, man, this shit's good, you know? But now, like, this is one episode, and I'm like, hmm, I fucking wonder what's going to happen now. No, the thing that hooked me about Bunny Girl Senpai is that it was only 23-minute episodes, but it felt like I just got done watching yeah, the movie. Yeah, that was something me and you talked about a lot, right? Like, yeah. there's a lot of shows where you watch the episode, and you're just like, man, it's over already. Nothing happened. <laughs> like, or but every episode of Bunny Girl Senpai, you felt like there was, like, major development. Every episode. Yeah. Because was... usually, like, when you watch an anime, like, think of, like, Goblin Slayer, okay? Uh-huh. Think of, like, the last portions of the big fights. You have them fighting all the goblins out in the field. It flashes inside once in a while, and then it flashes back to the goblins in the field, and then it flashes the goblin slayer. That was a whole episode. Uh-huh. But in Bunny Girl Senpai, you have, like, something happens, something happens, something happens. Something. It's so many different things, so it feels like more, right? Because yeah. usually in, like, action animes, it's, like, one huge fight scene as an episode. So yeah. you get bored of it pretty quick. He's standing! He's, He's alive! alive! It's alive! <laughs> huh? I got Tracy upset. Yeah? Did you tell her you fell asleep or something? Oh, she just doesn't be home soon. Uh huh. Well, everyone's going to be there in an hour anyway. Yeah. You have fun with that. Indeed. You got any thoughts on uh, Promise Neverland? Do you want to speak up real quick? <laughs> uh, it was dark. It was. It was demented. Demented? <laughs> it, it makes me think of this guy here. Are you, are you saying he's going to be one of the creatures? Probably. Fair enough. I'm really curious uh, to find out what those creatures are. You know what I mean? I want a name or something. I want to know. But, okay, so this is... Okay, my question is, do you think it. the whole world is filled with those creatures yes. and they're one of the only humans? Or I think it's... Le- I think that area? I think it's going to be the whole world. There's going to be, like, sections of humans, you know what I mean, that are, like, underground like hiding. Farms or... And f- farms and people hiding underground and things like that. But yeah. I think, like... This is just a different world where, you know, creatures have taken over everything. Yeah. So, Or I'm do you excited. think it's just the underground society? You know, I definitely think it's the above ground society. That orphanage is, like, in the middle of fucking, not a city, but, like, it's 
It's like in the middle out, of yeah. ideal. Like, it looks like a yeah, yeah, mountainside or countryside, something like that. It doesn't look like it's too like out there. Yeah. But yeah, I want a name for these creatures. I'm really curious what that's going to be all about. Yeah. I'm curious as to how the show's going to go. Because if the whole world is like that, like what the fuck are they going to do? You know? Uh, no. That, I guarantee they're going to find like some. They escape them from hell. You know what do you do after that? So that feels bad because Ray, the the There's kid with the black hair, doors, yeah. yeah, Ray, the kid with the black hair, was like, "Oh, you know, if we get out first, we have to survive." Because he didn't even know, but now he's like the most truthful of them all. He's yeah. like, "Oh shit, now we have to survive." Unless if it's like this continent, or whatever, and they find a way. Yeah. To the rest of the. Yeah. I I'm really curious. I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. Though the show just looks so much fun. Yeah. You, I can't believe you didn't. I you saw that symbology. I didn't even notice that at first. That's crazy. Yeah. That makes so much sense. I was wondering what the forks and knife were before, but now, you know, buttons click. And then I on on the, the story art for the show, they're standing on a plate with a timer on it with forks and knives. It makes sense, you know, when you think about it. We're ready to be eaten. Pretty much. Essentially, that's what the numbers on their freaking necks are, too. It's like the dates. Yeah. That well, it's like, it's like a... a it's, yeah, it's cow branding, you know what I mean? Like, we put tags on cows or whatever. Hey, drive safe. Stay beautiful. We'll see you in less than an hour, sir. Yeah, that's... But it'll be a little... Yeah, it's 5.07. Okay. We'll probably see you a little after that, but That's fine. we'll yeah. see you when we see you, friend. Yeah. I was gonna say something about this. What was I gonna say? Fuck. Um, I don't know. I'm just excited to see this. It's it's dark. It's a big twist. It's a big different style of what we were expecting for sure. Yeah. Um, there hasn't been much foreshadowing for anything else that's gonna happen yet. No. But at least they like predated everything with like explaining. Hey, these three kids are extremely smart. So when we get to points where they're going to do, do some wild shit, we're going to understand that, like, hey, they thought about it. Like, one of the small things that I don't, maybe you didn't pay attention to, but, like, she isn't stupid. Because as soon as they're, like, they're coming out, they're like, oh, shit. And they, like, ran behind the cart and she, like, turned around and grabbed the bunny because she wanted to make sure there's no evidence that they were out there. Yeah. She's smart. She does think things through, you know? Although her thinking she can get all 38 kids out of that fucking orphanage, she's stupid. There's no way. No, Unfortunately. It's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah. I also want to know if the caretakers are human. Yeah. If Mama and the other one... You haven't met the other one yet, but you see her in the intro. Uh, what's her name? Sister Crone? Crony? Yeah. But you see her in the intro? Yeah. So I'm really curious to see if uh, she's going to be a part. And the, uh, according to the last episode... Spoilers. Ooh. I kind of want to click on it. Don't look if you don't want it. Huh. <laughs> Alright, spoilers for everyone listening. Did you read it? Okay, spoilers for everyone listening. If you don't want to hear, I'll run through this in 30 seconds. Okay? There's at least many plants. She's the main antagonist of the first arc. So we know that they're going to be trying to get out of the orphanage for a little while. It's not going to be an yeah. immediate overnight thing. She's also the biological mother of Ray, the kid with black hair. And uh, they, the house that they're in is plant three. Okay, I gave you thumbs up. You guys can turn off this or turn the sound back on for uh, no spoilers. That was interesting. I'm I'm really excited about that. It's interesting because now we know that there's multiple uh, things, and that means she's probably human. Yeah, that would make the most sense. I'm curious. I really want to know like what this deal is. I don't know, but I got a feeling it ain't gonna be good or great. Yeah. Oh, another thing. Uh, the animators are uh, the same animation people who did. Um, Wotakoi? Wotakoi, yeah, sorry. Oh, damn. So I'm, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I'm excited about that, the main animation studio for it. Because Wotakoi had, like, pretty solid animation. Yeah. It had, like, a good balance of chibi stuff and, like, comedy, which is going to be interesting to see them go from a comedy romance to this shit. Um, it's a big twist. It's like going from flying to seeing how fast you can die. <laughs> flying to die? That's a, that's a big jump, my friend. <laughs> like I said, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I'm excited. Like I said, this is probably my most hyped show right now, especially after watching the first episode. Like, I'm super into this, and I want to know where it's going. I'm really mad that I didn't say my point earlier, because I had, like, a really good thing that I was like, ooh, this is going to be a good conversation topic, and I forgot it, and I'm really mad. I, sh I should start writing things down, probably. Uh, you'll think of it later, you know, yeah. when you're after we're, Yeah, <laughs> when we're at D&D &D tonight, I'm like, yo! <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to frustrate me. But it is what it is. Um... I don't know. You got anything more on this? I'm really excited. On this particular one, no. I'm so excited. Again, I kind of want to. Our... I'm gonna. I'm gonna not say anything more out loud. But I want to see if there's any spoilers on any of these. One of the three perfect students. We knew that. Ooh. This is me. Like, I'm like making sure the sound is good. 
Uh, just so while I read spoilers, whatever. Ooh. Damn. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I'm going to keep saying stuff. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I got to stop doing this to myself. You got to stop, dude. Okay, because now I'm like, I want to know what's going to happen now. Oh, God. I'm about to read the manga for this shit now or something because, like, oh, my God. I'm just going to read the manga for Don Machi. Ah, one day. I'm not really worried about it. I want to see what the manga got rated. 8.68. So it has really good source material. Yeah. Ooh, a lot of nines and tens. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. Cool, I'm excited. This has good source material, which is a really promising note, right? A lot of the manga or anime that we've seen recently has like subpar or average yeah. source material. This really high rated source material. I'm so excited, man. Yeah. I was not looking forward to this dumpster fire of a season, but this has given me some hope. Indeed. Some hidden gems in the darkness. <laughs> Alright, we're going to jump to our last one that we're going to discuss from winter 2019, and that is The Rising of a Shield Hero. This is pretty pretty simple, standard, straightforward. It's an isekai. Yeah. Main character comes in. He's one of five, four. Four cardinal heroes, and he gets fucking branded as a criminal because he gets, uh, what's the proper term? Uh, what, what is it called? Uh, when somebody put, makes it look like you did a crime? Uh, uh, framed. Framed? Yeah, he got framed for a crime, and they hate him, so they set him out. Nobody wants to help him, and he just embraces it. Nobody fucking likes him, and like... I will say that's probably like my only complaint is in the first episode he changes way too much. I don't does that think make sense? He, does. he literally gets dragged to another world where okay. right off the I, bat I get nobody that. likes him. Not I get anybody. That. The king doesn't I respect get that. the fucking normal people that know he's a hero there to help don't like him. On the they, it's not that they don't like him, they just make fun of him because he's only the shield hero. Yeah. And like while I get that, I think he went from like being happy go lucky to being a dick way too fast. That's all I'm saying. Dude. I understand that there was multiple utterly, instances. He got utterly betrayed. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that there was like two or three things that happened in this first episode, which let me like take a moment. Can we like they did a forty five minute first episode? You know, I was so that was great. I loved it. I got to watch forty five minutes of anime. You know, I was like, I was like, man, this is a long episode. You know, I'm like, oh shit, I'm 20 minutes in. It's not. Oh my god, <laughs> like we're not even halfway. Fuck yeah. Um, but that being said, like, I've, I don't know. I, I that was my only real complaint was that I felt like he changed way too fast. I can understand like if he became a loner, but like he was immediately just like embracing it. It wasn't like, oh, I don't want to deal with people anymore. He was like, I'm gonna take advantage of people now. He like shifted very quickly. And I understand he had to take advantage to get treated normally because, like, you remember when the merchant, he was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to torture this fucking guy until he does what I need him to do. And then he, like, just beat the shit out of people. Like, I don't know. I just think it was a big change. But outside of that, fucking loved it. It's a cool concept. It's another isekai. It's very normal. It's standard. And I want to see how he ends up using a shield as a weapon. I assume it's going to be able to use magic because we we've saw it use. Seen yeah, it we've seen it use abilities. a little bit. So I'm wondering, like, what kind of magic it's going to get and what kind of cool shields it he's going to get. A- but because his is a non-offensive, but I get I guarantee he's gonna get like a spiked shield or something, and like yeah. be able to fight with that, or it's gonna be able to cast good magic, or it's gonna have like reflective capabilities or yeah. something that's gonna like give him that offensive edge. And at the very end of the first episode, we saw him meet his actual first companion, which we don't know that in character yet or in the show yet. But if yeah. you watch the intro, it's the same chick. Yeah. And then if you've watched the like the previews, it's the chick that's talking to him, like, I'll be your sword. I'll be by your side no matter what. So yeah. it's pretty obvious who it's going to be, but yeah. I'm excited to see how that's going to go. I want to see him like going in dungeons and shit, and I want to see them fight the waves. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. Because everything that I've read in like the comments of the anime that I watched and shit is like people are like, oh, um, you think the other Cardinal Heroes are dicks now? Wait to see what they do later. Da-da-da-da-da. So I'm really curious because... Like, do, okay, this is something have... I talked to you about a little yeah. bit. So, I have a theory that I don't think it was a spear guy who set him up. Yeah. I, I don't think it... It might be, but I don't think it is. I think it's the little fucking douchebag with the bow. Because I think Ren is too much to himself, the sword here. I think he's too much to himself to really care. But I think the little fucking bow guy who's, like, indirectly, like, made comments at him, you know what I mean? It's kind of one, yeah. mischievous. I think he's going to be the one to talk shit. I think the spear guy was actually, like, genuinely thought that he committed this crime. Yeah. But I don't think that's who did it. So, we'll see. 
I've enjoyed it so far, though. It's One episode is 42 minutes or something like that, but it was a fun fucking episode. Yeah. I think it's a cool concept. Like, the weapons eat the parts of, an- like, monsters he beats and shit. Yeah. And, I don't know. I think the whole slave trading thing's interesting. I don't know. Uh-huh. It's a very standard isekai by, like, all, you know, by all takes. It's just good looking. The only difference is, is that our main character, unlike a lot of other isekai heroes, is not well-liked or Yeah, well-loved. usually people love the main character, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. He no. has zero allies at this moment. Yeah. It, I'm, Every- sure, well, I'm sure he's going to get the slave chick or whatever, and she's not going to like him initially, you know? It's oh, not yeah, going to be, no. like, one of those things, but... Although, I'm curious, because he woke up... And I want to know if that first scene was a dream. Remember that? Because he was like, oh, what was that? When he woke up in his bedroom and then, like, turned off his game. Uh-huh. And, like, the scene prior to that was the slave chick bringing him a ball. And he, like, handed it back to her or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I want to know if that was a dream and if that's why he's choosing her. I don't know. I'm just curious. Uh-huh. And I want to know what the advantage of the shield hero is. Because, like, while the stories are like, oh, the heroes will have a good idea of what's coming in. The sword, the spear, and the bow hero know everything about this world. He knows nothing. He has to have some type of different advantage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm really curious what his like thing is going to be. From what I can tell, as of right now, he has the highest starting defense of any of the others. Oh, for sure. He didn't give a shit about getting beat up. No. Or not even... They are eating him, and he's like, this doesn't even hurt. <laughs> yeah. Like, truth be told, yeah, they're low-level monsters, but at the same time... That should hurt, right? No, yeah, well, that's what a tank is, you know what I mean? You just don't give a fuck when you take damage. Like, whatever, bitch, smack, you so know? His automatic level one starting defense was probably much higher than everybody else's. That easily alone is an awesome. I think what the thing is going to be is that the shield is more versatile than the other weapons. You know what I mean? Yeah. A sword can only cut, a spear can only pierce, shoot. and a bow can only shoot. And I guarantee, like we were talking, like his, he's the magic one of them. I think yeah. his shield is magic. Like, yeah. Not in the sense, like, oh, it has power, but, like, he can use magic from it. Yeah. And I'm sure, like, the sword's going to get, like, a fire version of it, but, like, his can, like... I guarantee he's going to have more options, right? Oh, yeah. I guarantee he's going to be, like, the most unique. And that's where his power's going to come from. Like, he's going to be a smart guy rather than, oh, I just power through everything. Well, he's also going to have to be the smart guy. He does yeah. not have anywhere near the number of companions either the other yeah. three have. So I'm excited to see where the show's going to go. It was fun. I think this is, like... It's just a fun, simple isekai. This is, like... While watching this and slime, I'll have my isekai fill for the year, you know, or for the season. I wonder season. if they're going to continue with the 45-minute episode or if they're going to drop I, back to the 20 minutes. If they go to 45-minute episodes, I'd be hyped, but it says here only 24-minute duration. Oh, okay. But if they go to longer episodes, I would be fucking hyped. Hmm. Sorry, I'm really bad about reading through shit, I know. <laughs> so I knew this. The chick that betrayed him is one of the princesses. Oh, shit. Which is hilarious, because he called her a bitch before even knowing who she was. But, like, you knew that, like, she looked like the chick, and she looked like the chick in the intro. Yeah. So when they're coming into the castle or whatever, she's, like, looking out the window in her princess garbs and shit. So it's pretty obvious that she was going to be a princess, at least to me. Yeah. So I think that's why he was punished so severely, too, if you think about it. Yeah. Well, then again, he was actually punished very lightly, only for the fact that he was one of the four heroes. And they can't even summon more until all four heroes are dead. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm going to stop reading all this. Oh, that's old man. Okay. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but I'll talk with you about that off screen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's what, the seventh show we talked about? Do you have anything like, crazy to talk about? I feel like it's a pretty straightforward isekai. I'm yeah. excited to see where it's going to go. There's not a whole lot to go off of yet. It's a simple no. world. Everything seems to make sense. We know that it's not going to be happy-go-lucky the whole time, which, again, kind of falling into the darker tropes as a whole. Yep. He got fucking accused of raping somebody, so... Yeah. That's going to be wild. And then effectively framed. Yeah. Which... Shit. <laughs> I'm excited to see where this is going to go. But I still think Problems in Neverland is, like, my most hyped show of 2019 right now. That show looks so fun. As of current, this one and that one are the ones I'm looking the most forward to watching completing finishing yeah uh other than the ones that are continuing over from last season yeah so if you want me to talk about those for a quick second uh yeah. we just had a new episode of slime that was fun yeah uh Demon. Rimuru beats the orc lord which i think we all expected yeah but according to you in the source material it was a lot harder of a fight but in yeah. the show it just was easy he's like uh you know what i'm tired of fucking around just eats him yeah no in the in the source material apparently he had to seriously break down the orc Mentally, yeah. Mental defenses before he could actually overtake, because he was losing. Yeah. 
But again, I was talking to you about this. I think if he just fought him normally with, like, the Black Flame, he would have just shit on him. Because yeah. it wasn't even close. When, when that Black Flame was happening, he had to rip off his arm to regain, regain generation. So if he just, like, kept doing that, he wouldn't have been able to regenerate anything. Cut off his head with a Black Flame, it's over, dude. Like, what are yeah. you doing? But that's just, maybe I'm simplifying something that's not simple. I don't know. But also, he wouldn't have been able to absorb him and gain his powers and abilities. Yeah, which I'm curious to see what powers he's going to gain from it. Yeah. Um, they haven't shown us anything yet, obviously, but you may have read something. But yeah. I'm curious what powers he's going to gain. At this point, he's 100% the level of a Demon Lord, you know? Like, there's no question yeah, about it. or butts about it. Yeah, because now he just consumed a Demon Lord and gained his powers. And he was, by all rights, it looked like he was going to shit on a Demon Lord from the start and the yeah. get-go. But it turned into more of a slightly more even fight. They try to give you backstory for the big baddie. Like, I think that's a complaint I have of that scene. was like, nobody cared about the Orc Lord's backstory. He could have just eaten him and moved on and nobody would have been... I don't think that changed anything. It wasn't like, oh, poor Orc Lord. I didn't feel that. I was like... But at the same time, it also gave us a perspective on why he was so willing to gain power from any direction. Well, like, when he watched the scene when he became the Orc Lord, he was starving and dying in the desert. So I was like, oh, that's good enough, you know? Yeah, but at the same time, why go back and try to conquer your own people then? Well, because he was being directed to do so. Except he was Like, you could have left all that. Yeah, he was. Mm. Gelmund was, like, trying to get him to do all that. He was trying to turn him into a demon lord. You didn't have to give him a real backstory. That's all I'm saying. I'm not mad about it. I'm just saying it was unnecessary. Dude, sometimes the best things in a show are the unnecessary little tidbits they throw in. All right. (laughs) I'll accept it. Okay, other shows that are continuing over from last season are Sword Art Online Season 3. Guys, welcome back to Tower Climbing. Yeah? Yep. <laughs> I'll see about giving SAO Elysiaization a chance here soon, but I'm I showed you my two watch list and it's like seventy fucking things long, so it's so like Yeah, no, no, no. You are fine, dude. You don't have to watch it. You can let me watch it. Yeah. So that I can throw trash on it all. Day. Is there another hundred floors? Yep, another hundred floors. Jesus Unfortunately Christ. though, we don't get to see the first thirty four. They skip straight to floor thirty four. Were they just they did they just fly through it or was it just like, oh we get to skip it? Yeah, the the person that's helping them literally is like, Oh, teleportation spell. Level thirty four <laughs> That's pretty lame. Yeah, I know. We'll see. I don't like I said, I'll give it a chance probably. Sorry. Yeah. Um uh, we started Radiant, which has started last season. Uh it's okay. It's a shonen. I'm sure it'll be something to just kind of fill the time when... Because usually when we get together on the weekends here, we, like, watch a couple episodes of some anime, whether we need to catch up because we didn't catch last week's episode or whatever it may be, and Radiant's just kind of filling that spot. It was Trika for a little bit, but we both kind of got bored out on that. Yeah, no, We that. might drop Radiant, too. We don't know. It's just... We've watched, what, two episodes? Two? Maybe three? Two. Uh, four? I thought we watched four. I think we watched two. You sure? He fights the demon thing. Oh, yeah. And then he goes and saves the people. Yep. And then that was really it, so. Okay, I think it was about yeah. two episodes. Maybe three. All right. Point I'm, stands, we haven't watched enough. We might drop it, because, again, we have a lot of shows between the two of us that we need to watch. Yeah. And with us picking up possibly, or at least me, I'm picking up, like, six shows this season. It's going to be a lot. Luckily, they're spread out. I think that's one thing I can yeah. be thankful for, is I can watch an episode, like, every couple of days and yeah. just be kind of past it and not have to think about it. Going back to other shows is going to become more difficult to Yeah, for this. sure. Any free time I have yeah. is going to be dedicated to other shit now. Yeah. But, like, I have so many shows on my watch list right now. Dude, don't you have 69? I think it changed because I changed some around because I'm currently watching some of them. But there's so many shows (laughs) on here, dude. (laughs) Most of them are pretty short, luckily. You guys can't actually see this. And not all of them are out yet. And some of them are saved for our bad shit show Sunday stuff. Yeah. But still, there's a lot on here. Like, I haven't watched all of Toradora. I haven't watched Clannad or Clannad After Story. Toradora is pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed that one. I haven't I watched, watched uh, I haven't watched Bacchano yet. I haven't watched Baby Steps. I haven't watched, you know, like, there's so many, like, big name shows. Haikyuu I haven't watched yet. Um, oh, Grisaya is another dark one. I heard it's so average. <laughs> you no, know, it's average, but it's pretty dark. So it's not high on my list of stuff to watch. Yeah. Uh, there's this one that we were talking about last week. I don't know if this was off stream or on stream, but this is the uh, the do you want to eat my pancreas thing or whatever. Oh, yeah. I want you to eat my pancreas. <laughs> I'm to watch that. That one was. Uh, I have to watch Mob Psycho 100, 1 and 2. I have to watch NHK. I have to watch Psycho Pass, which I've never seen yet. I have to watch Real Life, which is really good from what I hear. I have to watch March Comes In Like a Lion, Steins Gate Zero. It's a lot. I have a lot of stuff to watch. So one day I'll get around to all of it. 
<laughs> finish One day. Toradora. Yes. Yeah, somebody in streams telling me to finish Toradora. <laughs> um, for the podcast purposes, I think we're kind of done. There's not a whole lot um, left to talk about this week. It was just like, hey, no. you know, 2019 started. What do we have? What's good? What's bad? Um, go Black th- Clover has officially started to come into a story that people are actually starting to enjoy now. Yeah. And Austin stopped screaming and yelling at everything for the most part. I call bullshit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think that's ever going to be a trope that he fully drops. No, unfortunately not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Podcast purposes, I think we're done. I think out of everything we've talked about, I've only dropped one of them. I think we're going to continue watching everything, at least to this point. Yeah. Uh, at least give it another week or two before we really just, like, are you know, dropping things. or continue. I think on. the most likely to drop stuff for me is quint- quintessential quintuplets. We'll see if it turns out okay. Yeah. Uh, domestic teacher probably going to be dropped at some point unless like I don't know it, it's okay so far if it's not it's if it not doesn't amazing. stay if it stays average I'll finish it um, Dororo I really want to finish that one's seeming yeah. to be good. I want to finish Dororo I want to finish Promise Neverland I want to finish Shield Hero um, what else what else what else what else you're watching Boogie Pop not me yeah oh I, I dropped that one with the fucking fifth grader bullshit yeah no that's it's horrible fuck. I think those are the six out of the seven that we looked at so yeah and then you have Boogie Pop. So we'll see. Boogie, Pop, Boogie Pop's I, in the middle because I haven't watched it yet. I might drop it. I don't know. I need some more information in the next couple episodes to really figure some of this out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was going to be the point that I was going to bring up for Brandon. So I was explaining to him, and I told you about this the other day when you came over, is like there's two different types of anime. An anime will either give you a lot of information up front or no information up front. Yeah. And uh, The Promised Everland is a perfect example of how to give you not a lot of information up front but make you really like the show yeah it gives you that perfect level of like hmm i wonder what's going to happen next you know yeah i hate when like but then there's shows like chica who give you no information and continue to give you no information but i have no interest to continue that one which one sorry chica oh yeah chica yeah (laughs) but i i it's really hard to find that perfect balance. I think the show is a good way to do it because it's it's meant to be a psychological like, hmm, I wonder what's happening, what's going to happen, you know, what is the point of this show? And I'm really curious to see how that's actually going to go. Fall off a cliff harder than Darling in the Franks. I don't know if that is possible. <laughs> did you watch Darling in the Franks? Yes. So <laughs> it started stronger than like pretty much. It was one of the biggest starts of the last year. Like people were in love with it, and then it just giant robot waifus. <laughs> garbage <laughs> uh but yeah for podcast purposes i think we're gonna call it there because we gotta get going here soon but i'm gonna hang out and chat with someone or i'm gonna hang out and chat with chat for a little bit so for anybody listening to the podcast thank you guys so much for checking us out if you have anything or any comments or anything be sure to hit up our email get to talk show at gmail.com uh check us out on youtube check us out on twitch check us out on spotify wherever else i don't know we post stuff we do things but come hang out with us. We usually hang out and chat for a little bit after the stream and just talk about some anime that was related to the stream or not related and just kind of get people's opinions on stuff we're going to talk about next week. That being said, maybe not tomorrow because I don't know if we're doing stuff tomorrow. I don't know what the plan is. I... But the next big stream, I want to do like an isekai, like, I don't know. We need a, I need a good title. We'll come up with something. But like the isekai show. We'll talk about Sword Art Online. We'll talk about Log Horizon. We'll talk about... Grimgar, we'll talk about How Not to Summon the Demon Lord, we'll talk about Conception, we'll talk about uh, In Another World with a Cell Phone, we'll talk oh, about ReZero, God. we'll talk about uh, whatever, fucking anything that comes up that we can think of, <laughs> any isekai type show, we'll kind of just talk about it, hang out, and just get opinions on it, what made him good, what made him bad, things we liked, things we didn't. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, sign out, come on man, you got it this time, I believe in you. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this particular podcast slash stream. If you'd like to follow us, uh, please do so. If you'd like to subscribe, also do so. And if you have any questions or suggestions to make the show better, please email us at the... Uh, email I said earlier. Don't worry about it. Email. That you <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I say a sign-off, I gave that part already. Come on, man. <laughs> we got Corinne. She comes in here. She's got her explosion thing, man. What do you got? Come on. Give me something. Uh, let's see here. I'll let him think. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see all you crazy kids next time.